Hi, this is Sahai, and I'm going to start our lecture on uh, State of Play, which is our project that is a uh, requires one single very successful um, experiment using a new material um, to cast, and that new material must bring important content to the uh, work itself. So I'm going to go ahead and start by just reading over the assignment, which you will find this text also in the module on Canvas. <clears throat> Contemporary art practices embrace the notion that artists are not are most likely not the master of a single material or technique, but rather they find processes appropriate to each project materially and conceptually. Each creative project might entail learning something entirely new. In this project, I want you to do something similar. Come up with an idea and process that are linked. Teach yourself to cast a material you have not before tried and execute the project successfully. The goal of the project should be to embrace the notion of play and humor to create an unexpected union of cast material and concept. Ideas, to find humor in something serious, to explore an issue currently in the media in an unexpected ma material or manner. Um, explore high art, low art, how quickly things change with the advent of the Industrial Revolution and later advances in shipping and plastics. Once slip casting was a means of making highly detailed, exquisitely crafted decorative ceramics, and now it is used to produce incredibly inexpensive, functional, decorative, and almost disposable wear. Possibly explore the divisions or overlaps between high and low art, just how Original slip casting was a means to make, you know, things that were really kind of very expensive, very high art. And now a lot of ceramics is kind of low art. Um, then, OK, so now I'm going to go to start the lecture and talk. I'm, I'm not talking about all materials that are necessarily um, fulfill all the um, parameters of our assignment. But I do think a lot of them do a good job of um, um, exploring kind of an idea where the material in the piece and the the object, the shape, the text, whatever, is an interesting or um, contrast to the material. So this is a piece by uh, Mona Hutum, and she's uh, a Palestinian. Um, English artist. She grew up in Palestine on the West Bank, at, but went to college in London. And, you know, the war, wars broke out um, in the West Bank and all around Palestine. And she basically was never able to return back home. So here's a return, a welcome mat. But if you look really carefully at it, what it's made out of is a hundreds and hundreds of pins or needles sticking straight up. So like if you were to actually step on it, you would be punctured by lots of needles. So it's kind of like the least welcoming welcome mat. This is another piece by Mona Hutum in which she just has, a, this is only half of it. It's called Vicious Circle. And um, so I, I suspect the piece is about alcoholism or something like that. But yeah, so it's just basically an interlocking circle of, of wine bottles. This is actually a piece of my own. And um, I it was part of an exhibit that had a very specific theme. It was veiling and especially veiling as it, you know, women are veiled in certain cultures and certain religions. And I chose to kind of make a really ornate window shape um, that I imagined, it, you know, the window being that place between kind of private or, you know, sort of the veiled space of private life and and, um, and the outside public world. And but I wanted it to be like you were almost looking in at something you shouldn't see like skin or something like that. So I cast this kind of very, very ornate um, kind of window reference 
in like a pink silicone. So if you were to touch it or look really closely at, at it, it would look very skin like very kind of fleshy. Somebody once told me it looked like um, little pig, you know, newborn pigs. And I was, I can't really get that image out of my mind now. Here's a detail of that piece. So I bought this kind of silicone called dragon skin that's sort of um, semi translucent. And then I added a little bit of a stain that turned it sort of peachy or like that fleshy color. Um, this is a piece I think is very, very important for any contemporary artist thinking about um, how materials and what what they're made out of bring uh, meaning to a piece. This is, piece is called Lick and Lather, and it is by J an artist by the name of Janine Antoni. And on the right side are one uh, about what seven or eight casts of of um, casts of Janine and Tony's bust, and then um, and they're all cast in soap. And on the left side are equal number of busts of Janine and Tony's head um, in chocolate. And the chocolate one, she licked and licked and licked until her um, her features started disappearing. And on the right, she took the busts into the bathtub and scrubbed them until until they the features started disappearing. So what that kind of does is um, you explore kind of issues of um, kind of guilt and cleanliness and shame. So the shame is sort of by you know, explored by the fact that she used these busts of herself to wash herself over and over and over. And on and then, you know, maybe potentially the guilt or the shame had from eating or licking so much chocolate off of her face from the pieces on the left. Here's another piece also by Janine Antoni, and it's a massive cube of chocolate, and she called it gnaw. So it was a perfect cube of chocolate, but after she cast it, she gnawed away eating at it till it was the shape that it is right now. This is kind of jumping back. This is actually also by um, the first artist I showed you, uh, Mona Hatoum. And one of the primary products of Palestine is like an olive oil based soap. And um, on, but on this soap, um, Mona Hatoum has uh, it, using something, I'm not sure, pins maybe in the soap. She has showed how um, the West Bank and Palestine has been broken up by Israeli settlements. So it's kind of talking about the land right and a, a very traditional um, product that's produced in the West in Palestine is being kind of broken up and altered by this uh, these other people taking over the space. This is another piece I talked about it also in the mold making lecture, but by Rachel White Reed, where she's kind of cast the undersides of chairs. I think it's really interesting because um, it's really just kind of beautiful colors that she's colored all the resins here and how she's using light to to reveal the sort of the translucency of these casts in resin. And then here is another piece that I talked about earlier by an artist by the name of Tim Berg. And also he works with in partnership with his, his wife, who's Rebecca Myers. And interestingly, Tim has this kind of notion that when he makes things that are about um, animals that have lived, that they have that he needs to um, cast them in clay because he sort of thinks of, of ceramics as having um, a life to it. Like the clay is very plastic and um, and then um, it dries, it shrinks, it gets fired. And he kind of thinks of that as the life of the clay that's somewhat representative representative or akin to the life of the animal that he's representing in that clay. So in this case, it's a dinosaur. Here it's the the um, penguins. But so Tim and Rebecca also work with imagery and things that are 
not real animals. In this case, it's like um, um, ice cream bars, chocolate chipped ice cream bars. And so those are objects that he would never make out of clay because he, he feels like they're inanimate. So he has to make them out of an inanimate object like foam and Bondo and and uh, like automotive paint and things like that. This is a, a piece by Wolfgang Leib, and he's a, a German artist who for who works very carefully with very specific materials. In this case, it's like a reoccurring series for him where he actually meticulously gathers pollen from the the countryside around his um, ancestral home in, in Germany and then sprinkles that in a rectangle on the floor of a gallery as a piece. And it's like pretty overwhelming if you encounter one of these, which I, I was lucky to do once. And um, because as you can imagine, that much pollen is, is, it's a really powerful color, but it's also a pretty powerful smell and aroma in the room. So interesting. So here's a piece by Christian Morgen and she's an artist from LA, and um, she makes all these pieces out of adobe clay. So this is like an unfired clay that has has uh, some cement added to it, and she replicates these kind of nostalgic objects, um, but they're incomplete. They're as if they were falling apart. Like that, they're not. They're not really there. They're almost like just like a memory or a dream. And so this is the kind of steering wheel of a Fiat, Italian Fiat. Here's the outside kind of image of that piece. This is a piece by an artist by the name, oh great, am I gonna, oh yeah, Michael Jones McKean. And what he did actually to create this piece is, um, this is above the, um, the Bema Center for Contemporary Art in Omaha, Nebraska. And he actually created a rainbow by shooting water above the the building at two o'clock every day for the extent of the the piece, which was like for two or three months, probably across the summer. And so so his material was actually water with sun hitting it to cre create a daily rainbow at two o'clock. And I talked about this piece in my multiples lecture as well, talking about sort of obesity, especially amongst children. This is a piece by a local artist by the name of Vivian Le Courtois, where she bought all this um, really cheap but commercially, you know, you know, large volume candy and then melted it down to make what she called these like fat boys, um, which were all, you know, they smelled really strongly of of artificial food coloring and, or artificial flavors and food coloring. And yeah, so there's that piece. Here's another piece that she also made from the same related series, but this was a different kind of candy. And she, she told me about how once she had this sitting in the corner of her studio and she discovered one day that like hundreds and hundreds of ants were consuming it from behind. So this is a piece by Kara Walker who um, you might know her for doing lots of um, paper cutouts, usually black paper, um, and their profiles of scenes from slavery and master-slave um, kind of imagery based on some historical images, but telling the story of, um, our, you know, black slaves in America. And so obviously this is not made out of black cut out paper, but this is a, a large installation she did in a sugar, a Domino Sugar factory or former Do Domino Sugar factory that is now just like a defunct building. She was commissioned to cast um, a large scale uh, piece and she chose to cast basically a uh, Aunt Jemima figure in cast sugar so this the, this large large piece here is i don't think it's finished in this image but it's entirely made from cast sugar maybe akin to how um the skulls are made for a day of the dead and here's sort of the rear view of this piece so i think a lot of um 
after the sugar was cast, a lot of the carving actually was a subtractive thing. And that's probably why you see this kind of sea of granular sugar on the ground. And here is probably a picture of it finished. Yeah, so I see now like the hands on this. So this is probably totally just cast. Here it's being carved and then here's the front has been carved. And that's Kara Walker standing in front of it. So I don't know that much about this piece. It's by the name, uh, somebody by the name of Lawson. I believe the figures in front are ceramic, fig, you know, casts, you know, busts. And, but the piece in the back is kind of the one that I was really interested in showing just because it's um, that kind of mandala shape has been cast in salt. So lots of other materials that um, that will um, that you can use to cast um, for this project. And this is a piece by Matthew Barney. Um, there's he cast sulfur, which is that that yellow piece in the background. Um, he casts uh, salt, which is that charcoal rectangle in the middle ground. There's also parts that are cast out of copper and bronze and brass. So he's somebody who's known for experimenting and casting in a, a whole huge array of materials. And the, what those materials are have a very deep, profound um, impact on understanding what you're seeing here. And then one of the materials that he's cast a lot that he's particularly famous for is casting in Vaseline. And this is one of those pieces that's been cast in Vaseline. And I think it starts falling apart a little bit as if in the heat of a, of a heated building. Um, and it obviously it's very soft. Like, I really don't know how he does this, but I'm intrigued. Like, how do you cast Vaseline, especially at that scale? And there's some more pieces also, um, done by Matthew Barney. Um, there's uh, gold plated zinc cast, all, all kinds of different things here. The, OK, so now what I have are a few images from student projects for this assignment. So this one is actually a student who had this kind of very buxom um, bust of a Madonna and um, she chose to make a silicone mold uh, of that bust and then she cast Madonna in ice cream. And so what you're seeing here is a vanilla ice cream Madonna and a companion. I'm not sure who the companion is. Maybe it's the Virgin Mary. Here's another piece. A student made some really lovely um, pear based uh, candies that were a little like vaginas. Obviously, she molded the vaginas out of clay and then made us a, a food safe silicone mold and cast these. Um, and here's two people eating those in the, from that class. I just love that photo. And then in the very same critique where we had ice cream and cast vaginas, somebody else who had honeybees made um, caramelized honey and cast nipples. <laughs> so that was a crazy critique. Here's another piece by a student, um, which is just, she taught herself how to cast paper. And in this case, she um, taught herself to use multiple colors of paper, paper and keep the colors intact while still breaking down the paper into a pulp and reforming it into these bowl shapes. Here's a pretty typical material to cast in silicone. This is a uh, kind of a clear resin. This is wax. So this is sort of like a image of abject object sort of discussed as like a, a bust of someone kind of vomiting more wax as their, their head is sitting in a pool of wax. And maybe my favorite of all time, this is even before the poop emoji is this is a uh, Cast in chocolate. Another piece, I think these are cast, various colors of cast resin. This is a piece by um, Martha Russo and Katie Karen that I had talked about before. Um, the large kind of bulbous pieces on the top right that are the brightest in color, those are cast paper. Then there's translucent porcelain cast with lights inside. 
And the materials at the bottom are all kinds of metal, recycled metal, fired with clay in all sorts of manners. Um, I also talked about this before, but you know, latex is certainly a material that you can cast or use to actually make a mold. Um, Rona Pondix, kind of um, a moldable silicone with little weird teeth in it. This is uh, um, part of a whole exhibit that I saw when I was in Berlin for a summer a number of years ago. And this was a catapult that every five minutes or so would catapult a huge block of this soft um, red wax into the wall. And it made this just amazing sound as it hit the wall and then kind of sunk down. And here's the guy who's essentially a performer who whose job all day was basically to load this um, cannon with, you know, blocks of red wax to shoot them against the wall. And this was also in the same exhibit. This was, it said it was labeled as plaster. I just really loved how how it, it um, really shows kind of like the movement and how this material was once really soft and pliable and maybe it's exploding for, for I don't actually know how, but I was really entranced with how this plaster is kind of frozen in a very wet moving moment. That's what the pieces look like overall. And in the same exhibit, there was a this conveyor belt that ever so slowly would bring one of the blocks of of burgundy red wax slowly, slowly up the conveyor, and then it would fall and make a big splat. And I guess that's the last image for this this talk. And what I really want you to guys to be thinking about is casting a material you've never cast before, and and also. Um, making sure that the material that you cast has some very direct um, contribution to the content of the piece. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much.